Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Iowa redistricting is on take two tonight. The legislature must now decide on a second round of maps for Iowa's congressional and legislative districts. We have the details now in our top story at five. Under these new and proposed maps, Democrat Cindy Axney and Republican Marionette Miller Meeks would be pushed into the same congressional district. Miller Meeks and fellow Republican Ashley Hinson would no longer live in the districts they represent if these new changes are approved. The Iowa legislature is scheduled to meet in special session that's set for October 28th to consider these maps. Of the incumbents running against each other really stayed the same. I don't think that's really different. So I think you have to look at it as it's not much different than the first map. Uh, they rejected the first map. What are you going to reject on the second map? Because if you didn't like the first, you shouldn't probably like the second. Uh, if your goal is to get to the third, well, you know, this is set up right for you because I don't think much has changed. If the second plans are rejected, the LSA will have 35 days to redraw a third set of plans. You can see the proposed changes on our website right now. They're posted at SiouxLandPrown.com right there on your screen or the KCAU 9 mobile news app. In other news tonight, a pedestrian was struck and killed by a Nebraska State Patrol investigator in northeast Nebraska. That crash happened just after 5 in the morning, approximately one mile north of Walt Hill. A preliminary investigation shows the pedestrian was an adult woman and had left a rural home. She was crossing Highway 77 and was in the southbound lane at the time of the collision. The driver immediately called for paramedics. The woman was pronounced dead at that scene. No other people were injured in the incident. The Thurston County Sheriff's Office tonight is leading that investigation. And a former South Sioux City High School coach accused of sexually assaulting teenagers is now facing federal charges. 26-year-old Nathan Rogers is accused of production and receipt of child pornography, according to an indictment filed yesterday through the U.S. District Court in Nebraska. Rogers has been arrested twice for separate sexual assault charges involving girls ages 15 and 16. Both cases have now merged and Rogers has pled not guilty. A status hearing is set for November 9th. Yesterday, the White House announced plans to vaccinate kids between the ages of 5 and 11. Federal regulators will be meeting over the next two weeks. They'll weigh the safety and effectiveness of the low-dose COVID-19 vaccine for nearly 28 million children. Once the CDC and FDA sign off on the proposal, millions of doses will be distributed as early as the first week of November. And instead of allocating mass vaccination sites, the White House says they want to use locations like pediatric offices, clinics, local pharmacies, and schools. The Sioux City Community School District released their statement saying they welcome this announcement, saying, quote, it is another mitigation step that can have a positive impact on our classrooms. We look forward to a day when COVID-19 no longer impacts our district, our community, or the world, end quote. The Biden administration is enlisting more than 25,000 doctor's offices and tens of thousands of pharmacies nationwide for this rollout. Wildfires and extreme drought-like conditions in the northwest United States have ravaged homes, animals' habitats, and are now affecting the hop supply. This will eventually affect local breweries like Ben's in Yankton, South Dakota. More than 70% of the U.S. hop production comes from Washington State, and the smoke from the fires have left them tainted and unusable. Government forecasters say that they expect two-thirds of the United States to have a warmer winter than normal. The South will more likely be drier than usual this season, and the North, they say, will be wetter. Scientists say that these patterns are typical for a La Nina year. The U.S. is currently in its second La Nina year in a row, which is not usual. The Midwest, northwestern states, and Hawaii should expect above normal precipitation, while the South is expected to have less. And we check in with our meteorological department here. Uh, we are getting a taste, Scott Larson, of what it could feel like for winter because uh, temperature is set to go down into the 30s again tonight. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have some areas of frost form up out there tonight, Sophie, and high temperatures today were on the cooler side as well. In fact, we have yet to escape the 40s in Sioux City. The high temperature this afternoon, 47, 50 degrees in Orange City and Yankton, 51 for Wayne and Tacoma. Overnight low temperatures look to fall back into the 20s and 30s. You can see that we do have some of those freeze warnings and frost advisories as you head further south and south 
southeast toward Omaha and Des Moines. So if you have any plants out there that could be affected by the cold, make sure to take precautions with those. We'll have details on a slightly warmer weekend and some rain chances. It's in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Carving pumpkins is a Halloween tradition for many, but how you get rid of your jack-o'-lantern after this holiday could actually benefit the environment. Pumpkins can cause problems if they're in a landfill because they're 90% water and contribute to groundwater contamination. Sean Tabke is the horticulture coordinator at Iowa State's Extension office, and he says composting can put your old pumpkins to good use. It's a better way to handle those same pumpkins is put them in a compost bin. And that way they can decompose and you can return that organic matter into the soil, both not only improving the soil humus and organic matter, but it adds fertility as well, uh, making other plants grow. If you'd like more information on where to take your pumpkins to be composted, you can visit our website right now. That's at SiouxlandProud.com. People living with a cancer diagnosis knows that it can affect their whole family, but those fighting the disease in Siouxland have a whole community behind them. You'll meet a woman who won her battle with cancer and learn more about the hockey game helping others just like her in this week's edition of Siouxland Stories. You don't know who you're helping at the time, but somebody is benefiting from it. Um, I can attest to that um, as a personal story. Barbara Pieper's story begins 15 years ago with a cancer diagnosis and a community ready to step up and help her. I was 46 years old uh, when I found a lump in my right breast. I just purchased a home with my 13-year-old daughter, and we were really enjoying putting a lot of money into it, and, and uh, you just don't expect it. And of course, the first thing you think about when you're diagnosed is just staying alive and getting the best treatment for yourself. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't take long to figure out finances are going to be a problem, whatever your situation is. I mean, the co-pays, the trips to the doctor, not being at work, uh, it's difficult made just a little easier because of both national and local organizations and events. Barb tells us because of the Susan G. Komen Foundation and Cross Check for Cancer here in Siouxland, formerly Pink in the Rink, survivors like her have resources available. So when you have a, a small community that has some dollars to share with people that are in need, it's a huge blessing. A community who understands exactly what she went through like Grant Slukinski, a center for the Sioux City Muskies. Both of my parents have had cancer. Uh, my dad had stage two, borderline stage three oral cancer. He had tongue cancer specifically, and my mom had basal cell skin cancer. Grant is getting ready to play in his first cross-check cancer event. So tough and emotionally. Um, it, it brings you a lot closer to your family members, and it makes you appreciate every day that you have, because. You don't know what, what turn can, cancer can take, and it's unpredict unpredictable. And he hopes that the fundraising and support they show for local cancer patients helps them win future battles. I hope they're just inspired by us, by our compete, and by our, our never give up, just to show them that it doesn't matter you know, what the score is in the game or even what the score is in life. Um, there's always a way to fight back and, and never give up. Which is why events like these make the Siouxland community unique. It's just super important because it's not only about the physical support, it's about emotional, mental support. I'm um, just knowing they have someone to talk to, go out and enjoy the game and support our community and everyone that is involved in the oncology community. If you're interested in attending this year's event, you still have time to get your ticket. The puck drops at the Tyson Event Center Saturday night, October 23rd at 6.05. And we have more information on our website right now about the game at Siouxland Proud. Dot com. The shift to clean energy threatens to put many Americans out of work. How a proposed bill would retrain them for a new kind of job while translating their skills coming up in about 10 minutes. And some of the coldest temperatures of the season so far are projected for Siouxland tomorrow morning and again on Saturday morning. Some frosty starts out there. Highs should be in the 50s and some rain chances follow as we head into next week. Your 9 on 9 forecast up next. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and Chief Meteorologist Scott Larson. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Thanks for sticking with us. I haven't been outside in a couple of hours, so I was personally caught off guard to see that we have sun on some of our weather cams here in Siouxland. Uh, 
skies clearing, but that doesn't mean temperatures going up all that much. Right. If you were outside this morning, Sophie, I mean, really, we had cloudy skies extending through much of the afternoon as well. But I was able to find the sunshine for you out there on the Ho-Chunk Center camera set up in downtown Sioux City. Bright, sunny skies and it looks like that'll kick our temperatures into the 50s for an hour or two later this evening before we chill things off quite a bit later on tonight. The temperature right now is just 47. We have a northwest wind that is spilling in at 8 miles per hour with relative humidity at 66% and a dew point of 36. Looking at temperatures, you can see that it looks rather seasonal highs in the 50s and 60s and some more sunshine along the way. We have an awesome photo to share with you this evening. This comes to us from Russ up in Akron, Iowa. That pretty much jumps off the screen there. Those beautiful autumn colors, those oranges and reds. Thanks again to Russ for snapping that photo and sending it in. If you have one of your own, make sure to go to uh, our website or you can also send it through email, weather at KCAUTV.com. After we get your picture, we'll send you a form, fill it out and send it back. And we'll make sure to show your photo right here on KCAU 9 News. That gorgeous shot. I specifically love that one because the grass is still so green and manicured. So nice job to whoever cut that lawn. Yeah, again, it really <laughs> just jumps off the, uh, the screen there. It's awesome. Great shot. Thanks a lot, Scott. Well, Tesla founder Elon Musk is having success tonight with another venture. The Boring Company now has a green light to build an underground travel system in Las Vegas. Take a look coming up in about seven minutes. But first, as the energy industry shifts, fossil fuel workers' jobs are being affected. You'll see how a proposed program would help them and their families transition next. A group of Senate Democrats tonight are introducing a new bill to help workers displaced by the shift to clean energy, find work in other areas, and offer some financial incentives. Our Washington correspondent Rashad Hudson explains. People are losing jobs. They're losing jobs to clean energy. Ohio Senator Sherrod Brown is proposing legislation to help fossil fuel workers find alternative work in the clean energy field. We want to make sure that people that lose jobs have real opportunity. They, they can choose to get retrained. They can get dollar support. Brown's bill also includes health care coverage and educational benefits for children of laid off workers. This isn't going to be just throwing them some money and saying go away. The bill would also give financial incentives to clean energy companies that hire those workers. It's an idea West Virginia Republican Senator Shelley Moore Capito says she supports. Any program that would help incentivize that, I, I certainly, that will have great impacts on West Virginia in a good way. Capito says energy workers have the skill set to be successful in other areas. Could be translatable either to another natural gas, but also into uh, probably the field of renewables or aviation. Brown says his plan has support from United Mine Workers and other industry leaders. And President Biden says the country must fulfill its obligation to help workers who helped power the industrial revolution that helped the nation's economic growth. Reporting in Washington, Rashad Hudson. News Nation Prime gathers news from across our country at eight every night. And before that, Leland Vitter and Dan Abrams have their shows. We have a preview. Tonight, China's bizarre new claims about the origins of the coronavirus, who they say is actually the source, plus a medical breakthrough, why pigs may be the key to organ donor shortages. That's On Balance tonight. Now here's a look at tonight's Dan Abrams Live. Thanks, Leland. Tonight on Dan Abrams Live. The explosive discovery of skeletal remains, bones in Florida, sparking new conspiracies around Brian Laundry. That's coming up tonight on Dan Abrams Live. If you're interested, you can catch it on any of the channels listed here or check your local guide. A new attraction is coming to Las Vegas, but it's just as practical as it is novel. See where underground tunnels from the Boring Company are leading to coming up next. The goal is to get cars off the Las Vegas Strip and get them underground. The Boring Company wants to take people all over the city with new tunnels that will connect to the airport, Allegiant Stadium, and even hotels. Joe Moeller shows us how. We all know how busy the Strip can get. The Boring Company's solution? To put more cars underground. This entire project could cost anywhere from $500 million to a billion dollars. Please cast your vote. And that motion passes. Wednesday, county commissioners approved the Boring Company's plans to expand the Vegas Loop to a total of 29 miles. There's going to be a lot of dirt, so make sure you don't destroy the roads in the process. <laughs> Absolutely. That'd be on us. Here is the proposed map. It has 51 stops, including downtown, at Strip Hotels, Allegiant Stadium, and the airport. The Boring Company and Elon will finance the cost of the tunnels 
and the properties have agreed that they will pay for the cost of their stations. LBCVA CEO Steve Hill says the vote allows the boring company to access the right-of-way underground. In the franchise agreement that was approved details the boring company's responsibilities. He says this is a one-of-a-kind project that will help get more people around Vegas quicker. There will be a fair charge. Uh, it will be per car and not per rider. Uh, and the boring company is committed that that will be somewhere between bus fare and what it would cost uh, to ride on an Uber or a Lyft. The project will take a few years. Next, the company will have to pull building permits. Teslas will be driven underground at first, but the goal is to go driverless. It just makes Vegas more attractive. Take a live look outside right now. Sunny skies over Cherokee. Don't go away though. Scott returns with one more check on your forecast. Stay with us. You normally see us weeknights on KCAU 9. But right now we're here to share something really special to the both of us. And that's getting vaccinated against COVID-19. It's available and it's free. And health experts say it'll help us quickly get back to the way things used to be. Getting back to doing things like traveling, seeing our families, and going to live events. So we can do this. Please get vaccinated. It's time we return back to life as normal. This important health message is brought to you by Siouxland Community Health Center. Today is crisis intervention training. We're going to be role-playing scenarios. You two are the married couple. Can't look away. And before we wrap up at 5, let's check in now with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Good afternoon, Sophie. First, some breaking news this afternoon. Just the last half hour or so remains found Wednesday uh, during the search for Brian Laundrie. You may remember that he is the boyfriend of Gabby Petito, that uh, travel blogger and a person of interest in her death. The remains have been confirmed this afternoon, indeed, to be those of laundry. The FBI now expected to have more coming up. We'll have that on World News coming up next. Elsewhere, federal regulators will meet over the next two weeks to weigh the safety and effectiveness of a low-dose COVID-19 vaccine for nearly 28 million children. Millions of doses could go out to providers in the first week of November. We'll hear from local health expert about that. And meet a former John Deere employee who is not letting the company's current labor situation get in the way of his love for John Deere Green. Find out uh, just how much coming up. That's after World News Tonight. We'll see you at 6. All right, sounds good, Tim. That is quite the collection. And uh, you wouldn't know it by the way we started the day, but it, it did turn out to be a, a pleasant evening. Yeah, we've been able to bring back some sunshine out there, Sophie, with some clearing of the skies tonight. That does set the stage for freeze warnings inside of that darker shade of blue southeast of Sioux City. The 9 on 9 forecast shows some more rain chances and generally cooler temperatures. All right, thanks, Scott. Thank you for joining us. We'll all see you here tonight at 6 with Tim and Jake. Until then, have a great night, everyone.